Okay, I guess we should get started. <clears throat> Let's call the meeting to order. Um, just a little housekeeping. There were uh, two um, cancellations, ARB 20-14 Dogwood Lane solar panels that was postponed by the homeowner and ARB 20-18 uh, 24 Willow Street uh, postponed by the architect uh, via the uh, applicant or the applicant via the architect. So we're gonna start as we always do in ascending order. We'll start with ARB 20-17, 23 Cedar Lawn Road, exterior elevation change. We can have uh, the presenter come on and, and introduce his, him or herself. Looks like Doug. What address was that? That's 24 Willow Street. Okay. Oh, I thought no, that was 24 Willow Street was canceled. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm 23 Cedar Lawn Road. All right. There we go. I think I've got it here. Okay. Now you, I'm supposed to share my screen, correct? Or I share? Saw you, I saw you a second ago, Doug. Now I just see your name. That's because I'm accessing the drawings here. Okay. I believe. All right, can you see that? Uh, there you go. You got it now. Okay, so uh, Douglas McClure for uh, 23 Cedar Lawn, the uh, Squires residence. Um, uh, the client has an existing uh, finished upper floor uh, in this building. It's a split level, so it's, it's never sure if it's a second floor or third floor or what we've got here. Um, but the existing floor is finished. Uh, they would like to convert it to a, it, right now it's a bedroom, they'd like to convert it to a master bedroom suite with a bathroom um, and a bigger closet. Uh, and to do that, uh, we're proposing to extend the dormer um, along the west west side of the house. Um, I added to this uh, drawing, just to make it easier for the presentation, I uh, pasted in a photograph of the back of the house currently. Um, so you can see uh, here the existing dormer. Right. And what, what we're proposing to do is to essentially extend that dormer uh, and add a window here. Uh, so just extend it along the, the back of the house. Um, the materials, we're just going to match the existing siding of the house, same color, white trim, uh, white windows. Uh, none of the windows are divided lights now. Uh, well, the, the existing windows have a some of them have a single horizontal divider, but we're going to delete that and just have simple, um, uh, oh, you know, single paint, single um, Case. panel uh, mm -hmm. casements. Can um, Doug? Can you show us the floor plan for that room? Sure. Uh, which way do I go here? Great. So the existing dormer happens right around this area and we're extending it in both directions here um, to get a nice dressing room, access a nice dressing room and then access into a master bathroom. And then there's an odd little closet in this area now, we're just extending it out into the dormer to give it a little more room for, for uh, his and her uh, storage. I don't have any more questions. Yeah, I didn't either. Nope. Okay, Deb, anything? No, it looks good to me. Michael? Oh, looks all right. Gail? Yeah, it looks great. Anybody else that I've forgotten? No, it looks good. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. 
you know what? Let's let's do it this way. Um, to make sure that because there's no there's no uh, well actually it is being recorded. So let's just say let me start that over. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is a. Uh... Very interesting. I, I like yeah. what you've done here. <laughs> All right. Have a great evening. Bye, Doug. You Thank too. you. Bye bye. Okay. Another one we've all been waiting for. ARB 20 19, two Hancock Place edition. I believe this is, uh, is this Griff, uh, Chris, Christina Griffin? Yes. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can we can't see you but we can hear you. Can Sarah, can you um give CGA Studios the uh Yes, um they they should have the ability to talk. Oh yeah, you have to unmute yourself uh CGA Studio. Actually, there's two of them now. Yeah. Christina Griffin Associates, you're muted. I'm open now. Can you oh, hear there me? we go. Okay, yep, I got you now. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Um, I'm here to show you, I'm uh, the architect for the additions and renovations to the Oakmore residence. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get the drawings up for you just a second. Okay. Can you see the drawings yet? Uh, yeah. Yes? No. no, not yet. Okay, hold on. There it is. Uh, Lizette? Looks like it's coming. You see the drawings? We do. I do. Okay. I do also. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is a uh, sketch that I did um, at the beginning of the project when we uh, were exploring different ways to resolve this uh, situation with the garage. This house has uh, a garage that is along the Old Croton Aqueduct. I'm showing you the site plan that shows the garage in the back. And there's a very long driveway leading to that garage. And we we're planning to relocate this driveway to the other side off of Hancock and relocate the garage to that side. The reason for that is to create a, a level yard for use by the family. This is a corner lot and this is the only level area plus it's uh, right against the aqueduct and there's there's no privacy. Uh, so we've um, proposing to move it to the other side and then create a nice patio and uh, a small extension that helps to in, enlarge the, the kitchen that's in the back there. 
This is our site plan to show the development of the backyard. We have had many meetings with the planning board. I believe four of them. We've been to the zoning board. We've been to the zoning board really because uh, the house has uh, non-conforming uh, cover coverage, but we're actually, uh, by taking away a lot of impervious surfacing and re relocating them in different places, we're able to have the same, uh, just slightly less the coverage than we had before, but it's still non-conforming. So this site plan is just showing, this is our landscaping plan. We have a team of our architects, landscape designer, well, actually landscape architect, civil engineer. And we, because uh, we have a site that, um, because we're removing this driveway, we're going to develop this so that we have a park-like setting. This is something that was reviewed um, by the village's landscape architect consultant. And we are proposing a deer fence between evergreen shrubbery and creating something that will look very much like a, a natural setting along the aqueduct. Uh, so the addition that we are proposing is here uh, that uh, to the where my cursor is I think you can see that right yes uh -huh. with a new driveway coming off of Hancock yeah I can I can say that 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 if you go back to that drawing the mass of that garage is is certainly not seen in the rendering in the, on the first page it, it looks like it's you know uh, blended in with the house and in fact it's considerably large and and you know, protrudes from the front of the house quite a bit, just a comment. Okay, well, this is taken actually superimposed on a photograph, but um, the idea was to, you know, make the house more of an L shape. And this garage is the size of really a standard two car garage. And um, it's very similar to the size of the existing garage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Could you, yeah, could, on that drawing there, could you could you go back to the landscape drawing and show us where the uh, fence, uh, the white uh, fence is, is slated to yes. go? Yes, um, the white fence starts at the aqueduct buffer. There's a there's a buffer um, that will have a deer fence that wraps around the property line, and then as soon as we hit the edge of the aqueduct buffer, we transition to a wood fence. And that, if you follow my cursor, wraps uh -huh. around, comes around. Can you the zoom front. in? Yes. So we can see the line. Yep. Uh, just do Control Plus. That might do it. Okay. So you see the double line that wraps around the edge. Um, a few feet in from the property line. Um, there are two fences. There's one that is really a continuation of the deer fence that exists that runs from the out, outer corner of the old garage along the aqueduct. And then it turns and then it ends at the, um, where the, the 30 foot aqueduct buffer ends and then it tra transitions into a wood fence. The proposed wood fence. Yes. Rick, can I ask you a question? Do you want us to pose questions as we go through the presentation, or would you like us to hold off until the end? I, whatever, whatever the you know, our guest is is comfortable with receiving. Christine, what, what is your what is your um, preference? I prefer to go through the presentation first, please. Okay, that's okay with me. I'm just going to show you the demolition plans just so you get an idea of the changes that we're making to the house. Just a second. Um, okay. And uh, okay. On this side of the house is where we want to have a two story addition. And this is just showing that we just want to come out. Um, about four feet, remove the wall here, just so we can expand a very small kitchen and then convert the garage into a family room. Uh, there's an existing family room here where my cursor is and then add the new garage. Um, on the second floor, there's a room 
there's one bedroom that you actually have to go through to get to the other side of the house. So we, that's one reason why we want to do this addition here. This is just showing the layout of the house, the, um, the new drawing showing on the lower level uh, extension of the, the kitchen, new family room. We're trying to create a private uh, yard area for the family and move the cars in the garage to the other side of the house. Sorry, this is the second floor, which is showing the new um, extension that helps to make sense out of this bedroom and add a hallway to the second floor to access the existing bedroom here and then add a new bath and bedroom over the new garage. And this is our roof plan. Our idea is that we're gonna have all the roof lines tie in with the hip roof that exists. There's a lower roof over on this side and we're planning to extend that to add the garage. I'm gonna to go to the elevations. Okay, this is the, the original house is here. Actually, I worked on this house years ago. Um, I designed this uh, portico for the house. Um, and this is a two-story addition um, that was done about 10 years ago. Uh, the addition we'd like to, to add is on the right here, and it is extending the lower hipped roof that's already there and matching the dormer roofs that are already on that side of the house. And that is our west elevation. We, we want to have the garage door facing the south so the cars can tuck in on the side of the house and um, not be in front of a garage door facing Hancock. And this is our north elevation. This is just showing that um, uh, to the left is the old garage that's gonna be converted into a porch and family room. Uh, this is our, hmm, this is the, I'm sorry. Just be patient, I'm sorry. I was jumping around, um, I don't see it north. Okay, this is just the existing elevation, just so you can see what it is now. To the right is a family room. That's where the new garage is going to go. And this is the existing garage. These are also existing, this is the existing east elevation, which is where we wanna have new doors from the kitchen. And this is the existing south elevation, which is showing the uh, old garage. Um, and this is our new, these are our new elevation. This is the east showing the um, new French doors off of a kitchen extension, uh, hipped roof over our two story addition. This, this on the left is the existing garage and we're adding some windows to that. Below is our south elevation. This is the uh, elevation of the new garage. This is the garage doors that actually are being relocated from the old garage. And then uh, these are new windows in the new kitchen. There are dormer windows above. There's an existing one and we're matching that exactly with the two new ones. And this is just elevations to show the new fencing, um, which I could blow up, hold on. On the west elevation, the front of the house to the left, we're planning to have a wood fence. This is gonna be very traditional and, and look with some pickets at the very top part of it and the solid bottom. This is to provide a private lawn area for the family uh, at that level area of the site and it, it turns and hooks into the house. And we chose the style of the, of the fence to tie in with the colonial house um, on the back, you'll see all these trees because uh, we're planning to have new shrubbery and evergreens and a deer fence that's going to be sandwiched between evergreen trees. And this is the north elevation, uh, which is what you'll see from uh, West Ardsley Avenue. You'll see on the left, the evergreen trees and then the new, uh, in the aqueduct buffer, and then to the right, the wood fence. There is an image down here. This is the existing deer fence. And we're planning to match that. That's way on one, one end of the property right now. 
it's going to be like a, a mesh, a very uh, black mesh between uh, wooden posts that are like uh, with bark on them. So they are kind of represent look a little bit like trees. And I wanted to show you the, I'm going to have to reduce this a little bit. Pro minus. <laughs> Okay. Just wanted you to see some of the materials um, on this page. This, this is a whitewash brick and um, we're planning to have the brick matched and to have, um, we've, we've done this before, we've had other projects like this where we have to have it carefully try to put the, a whitewash on that looks like it's faded because this obviously has faded over the years. And these are just some of the um, light fixtures we're planning to do something similar to that on the new light fixtures on the house. Um, these are just our cross sections showing the hipped roof extensions. Now, these are our views from the aqueduct, you know, it's really important about this project is that it's a, it's been a, a challenge to try to find a way to um, renovate the house and provide this yard area because right now if you see these photographs across the top uh, you'll see a, a driveway and uh, tr cars on the driveway this is right up against the aqueduct and it's the only place where there can be a yard for the uh, family so we, would, we are proposing to relocate that to the other side of the house. And if you see this picture where my cursor is, it's a beautiful lawn, but it's very uh, open and, and has a slope to it. So uh, that is gonna remain as is. Uh, we wanna tuck the, um, the new patio and yard in the back. There is a patio, a small patio on the south side of the house is right here but uh, it, it, it doesn't really, uh, there's no access directly from the kitchen and uh, it's not really used. And this is the picture of the down at the bottom left side is the original garage, existing mud room. And this is the area where we'd like to put our new patio. This is the corner view and you can see that long driveway in the corner view of the house. This is our streetscape. This a house, um, I should blow this up a little bit. Two Hancock are, has, a, what, has an entry facing Hancock, but the only way to get to that front door really is to walk around the house from the driveway. But we're planning to put the driveway to the right of this, en this entry. And it's very similar. And there's a pattern on the street where there are uh, quite a few houses, well, quite a few, there's a few houses in the street that has a, a driveway up from Hancock. These are just some of the houses on the street. Let me just go back down. One thing I didn't see in any of those houses was a big white fence in the yard. Yeah. I think I've been through all the drawings. The reason for the fence is there is no um, usable yard area for this house and it's not private because it's a corner lot. And uh, to create privacy, we have uh, proposed a, a fence coming around. There has been a lot of discussion and scrutiny about the fences and the, the way we're handling um, the planted area in the aqueduct buffer, you know, by the planning board and the village consultants. And uh, we were able to get the planning, planning board approval uh, based on uh, lots of discussion and ideas for how we would do that planted area along the aqueduct. And although there are some um, changes to the landscaping on along Hancock, at least we are eliminating that driveway along the aqueduct and 
the owners benefiting by gaining a yard, a private yard area, but also the village is gaining by having uh, a planted area rather than uh, a driveway and cars to look at from the aqueduct. Uh, and this is our, our civil engineering's drawing, uh, engineer's drawing showing uh, the details of the trees that would be removed. We also had a arborist uh, review the plans and come to the site and write a report. We actually have uh, really looked carefully at which trees would be affected by this. And there is a very beautiful 54-inch tulip uh, towards the property line near where my cursor is. And that was something we wanted to say by having the, um, the driveway to the right and then have the cars enter the drive, the garage on the southern end rather than going straight in. There are, there are some other trees that need to be removed here and one tulip that we tried to design around it and eventually um, after a lot of discussion at planning boards, uh, there was a report written and because of the effect on the trees, there were a few that have to be, have to be removed. I think the planning board felt at least there was a balance between the trees that uh, we're adding along the aqueduct and then some trees that we have to remove to get the driveway to work. Well, obviously, if you're gonna take down that large specimen uh, tulip, you'd have to um replace uh the the girth of the the tree in kind whether it be in several trees or obviously you're not going to get a tree that big but you're going to have to um and i guess what they they did the uh the math uh, on you know what it's going to take to uh to take that tree down meaning what you're going to have to put in there versus what you're taking out i know that's been vetted by the planning board Yes, in fact, if you look at our landscaping plan that I just flipped back to, mm -hmm. you can see there are many trees and bushes as uh, we're trying to create a very um, natural looking uh, landscape here. So there is almost a sense of uh, a wooded area when you're going down the aqueduct and the even the deer fence is sandwiched between the trees so that you would barely see it. And there was a lot of effort that went into that. And um, I think that we were all finally comfortable with it in the end because um, now the, 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 the view from the aqueduct is gonna look very natural and wooded. Can I ask a question? Um, you, you spent a great deal of your time in the presentation just now talking about the view from the aqueduct and the work that went into making sure that that landscape and that those plantings are natural and that the view from the aqueduct um, is, that, is, is the best possible. How much time was devoted um, in conversation about what the view from Hancock Place towards the property looks like in terms of planting? What are you adding? Uh, let's not, to just to step away from the aqueduct for the moment. Well, um, what we're, we're redoing some of the landscaping here and trying to tuck this driveway in with shrubbery on both sides. We have taken a look at that also to make it look very natural rather than having a driveway that comes straight up the hill here. We have curved it. We have thought about how we could make that look, you know, uh, like a more natural and have the cars hidden on the southern end rather than come straight in. So there has been a lot of thought given to how we can um, landscape around the new garage. So, so sh I, I, I see you have shrubbery, but other than the shrubbery, so the view looking at Hancock to the front of the house, you've curved the driveway and you've added shrubbery. What, what other efforts um, have been and thoughts have been given as to that view? In terms of landscape, any, any, any other thing that came up either in planning board or, or just ideas you put forward in order to um, improve the view from Hancock to the front of the house. Again, getting away from the aqueduct. Yeah, well, I, I think that a lot, certain attention was given to this because of the trees that had to be removed. And we, um, uh, we felt that, the, that uh, it, this is a, a compromise, you know, and just to get the natural shapes of the walks rather than anything too formal because there's something very beautiful about this big open lawn. 
there is a tree, I don't see it shown here, but it's shown on the civil engineer's drawing. It's a 54 inch um, tulip. And that tree, because of where it is, it's about where my cursor is. That's another reason why we wanted to make the um, driveway to the right of it, although there is a big tree coming down here. So um, I, I don't think we have uh, ignored this at all. I think we have tried to make this as organic and natural, you know, with all the curves and the shrubbery that we're adding there and trying to keep the trees that we can. Um, so it wasn't all attention on the aqueduct, even though that's probably more important to the planning board. It, it, am I am I seeing? Please go back to that drawing. Am I seeing a uh, a drain in the in the driveway at at some point down the bottom? Yeah, yes. that's that's yes. a drain. That's yes. a trench drain. Right. It, is that is that pouring into some sort of uh, cultec that's going to uh, uh, yes. store the yes. water? We have a storm drainage uh, system, and they're part of our drawings here. Our set of drawings that was uh, reviewed and approved by Han Engineering. Okay, because there were, uh, you know, concerns from the neighbors about water, you know, running down that driveway and creating, um, you know, flooding on Hancock. We have a storm drainage system designed for a hundred year storm. They're underground storm drainage units that are right here in the yard. You can see it on uh, two more pages down on that drawing. I see it in a little more detail. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Was there any thought into um, how to create that driveway um, in a curve, but also keep that 49 inch tulip tree? Yes. Actually, we tried to keep it. And um, the uh, report from the arborist, um, in fact, the reason for the curve on the top um, where my cursor is, yeah. is because we were trying to keep, we can leave it here. But the, um, uh, the arborist report, you see, the, this is where it is right here where my cursor is. The arborist report felt there would be too much damage to the, the tree to keep it. Um, and we're actually kind of open to it because I think um, I have learned uh, in my long, I've been in, in practice like 32 years that sometimes the trees do survive. Um, but the recommendation was that this too much. Um, paved area at the root system of the tree and that it would be best to take it down. So that's that's what's uh, been slated to happen, is that tree is gonna come down? Yes. Okay. I know that that driveway was a straight driveway at one point. Um, and I do, I do know that they did this curve to try to yes. save that tree. But I think, like I said, uh, the um, the root system is not gonna survive. No, just to digress, you had asked about the fence, Rick, and I, I sort of feel the same way. You don't see a lot of these white fences, but we did approve the one at 47 around the corner, Ardsley, which was more of a picket fence. I think this is a better, you know, I think it's a nicer fence for if we're going to put one, you know, if you're going to put one in this neighborhood and it has more coverage in front of it. So my initial fear was that it was going to be fencing the entire property and that would have been yeah yeah just overbearing yeah so i wanted to talk about a couple things that's really great what you've done against the aqueduct um quite wonderful if you could stop moving your mouse i'm gonna get nauseous <laughs> <laughs> um thank you um it's, it is really wonderful what's happening up against the aqueduct it's like a great effort to um get something back and Understanding the whole idea here is to provide the family with some flat area and lawn area. However, this is ex it's in an it's an excessive fence to my looking at it, which is that it's six foot six in height, which is taller than me. Um, you've worked really hard throughout this site with creating privacy. Um, through the use of landscape and suddenly you go to a huge white fence that's going as close as it possibly can to the north property line 
in a neighborhood where there's none of the fences that are here um, as you go down Hancock are all set way back from the street edge um, as much as possible. Um, usually to enclose a small yard, a smaller yard, as in the house that's uh, just uh, west of here, and it's part of sort of having a corner lot that um, you have to deal with, right? You could have uh, the owner could have chosen another house that had a big rear yard. Um, creating a rear yard on a street like this is a little bit uncomfortable, given the neighborhood. The one that we just spoke about. I think respects the property line or the setback a little bit more and it's a little bit lower fence. The second thing is the um, garage itself is, um, is a, a, did you do the addition to the north, the previous addition? I did, yes. It's a very nice addition. It's so respectful of the original brick house. It, it doesn't try and say I'm a brick house too. It's a, you know, a former porch or I have no idea and it sort of has a history and a scale to it that is so different from this garage in scale, which has a massive hipped roof um, and topped by a big bedroom, um, uh, almost as big and in, in, it's wider, it's almost wider than the house, maybe it's not, and maybe it's just the same width of the house. And so it no longer feels like an addition, but a sort of wrong turn uh, in the mass of the house. Um, when you go back to the perspective, if you could, I just want to point out some things enough if I can use my mouse. What was, what was, uh, I'm take, what I thought was uh, great about the garage and all the additions was there was a set of lines that sort of tied the house together. There's this line here, and then there's the high eave line of that addition, and now there's a new line that's being introduced. Maybe it was there before but it wasn't sort of sitting proud of the property line at this height. And it's all driven by this element here. I'm gonna clear so I can talk about that. So I'm just gonna go through this. It's just that if, that this, again, it's a very simple house that you've enhanced over time. And that if this line could be lower, and I'm not sure about the hip roof, I just don't have a sense of that, is that this whole element would just be so much more smaller down the hill. I understand the idea of not having the garage face the road, but sort of pushing it out into this great lawn does not seem sensitive, nor does it seem in keeping with the neighborhood. Um, and I'm just, I'm sort of, I was surprised in, in the, you know, in the sketch, it's sort of, I can see your idea, I'm putting in a front lawn and a kind of straight drive up the side. And obviously there's other considerations, but now this addition has turned into a house unto itself. And if it was independent of the main house, sort of removed from it uh, to the south, it might have worked, but it's, it's right smack up against that south wall of the house and therefore doesn't have the delicateness of the previous addition on the north side, which pulls back from the um, east and west faces. Uh, again, this is a sort of Georgian, if you can call it that, scale house. It sort of has grand eaves and it sets, the roofs seem to set back and are in very low pitches. And now we have this big chunk of a roof because uh, again, because of the dorm on it. I would have been more comfortable if that additional bedroom had gone the other way over the garage uh, where it's hidden in the back, <laughs> it's sort of like a lot of old garages, uh, you know, a sort of um, uh, coachman's apartment above the carriage house. Um, it just seems quite, quite large. And, I, and even the way it was done before where there was sort of a trellis on the side of the house, you know, the landscape sort of comes up to the top of the house is now changed with the with the window. I think it's a single window now, not the two windows, which is a sort of false narrative about the house. Um, I might feel better about it if this was where the family room was, or there was some other element I'm trying to take in the views because they are there is the view to the west, or at least the landscape to the west. It just seems like it it landed and does not have the ease of the previous addition to the north side. Um, if, I can, if I can jump in, I, I completely agree. And, and one of the reasons that I feel that the garage looks bulky and not in scale with the house, and it doesn't lend itself to trying to tie 
in, in both style and character to the neighborhood is that most of the garages, um, from my observation, are detached um, for these old homes in Ardsley Park. So if this was detached, I could see that so what, along the lines of what Kenneth saying that this this drawing um this this design would look better but it's not you've actually now attached a garage to an old house where in fact if you drive around archley park there's very few garages that face especially on hancock but face the street they're either tucked behind or they're they're obscure this now you're trying to build a new structure which looks bulky to me and trying to match the original material of what was the original house. And we're hoping that the whitewashed brick is going to, you know, look, look as good as, as you suggest where the addition you did 10 years ago complemented it as opposed to matched it. So I, I also think that it, the, the design doesn't work uh, with a driveway coming off a of Hancock now that you're adding that curb cut as most of the garages on Hancock are in fact detached and they're much smaller in scale in relation to the main house. This, this to me doesn't comport with that uh, style and character of the neighborhood at all. Um, I won't move on to the, the fence. My comments are gonna be in line with Ken's in case somebody else on the board wants to comment on the garage because otherwise we may start bouncing all over Rick, but I'll leave it to you. Do you want me to continue or do you wanna let somebody else speak as to the garage? If anybody else has anything to add with the garage, by all means. Was, was there any thought process to putting the garage along the, uh, the south side and pulling it back? Is there restrictions or anything? Yes, and I, I'd like to explain that because um, I want to take you to the uh, view of the original house. The house right now has a lower hipped roof uh, to the right of the main house. I'm going to the existing drawings. I just thought you might see it better on the drawings. Yes. See this existing west elevation? Right now, this is a hipped roof. And uh, actually, I designed this dormer here. This is a trellis over French doors. This is the family room. Uh, and we're just taking this same hipped roof and aligning our new roof planes with it and bringing it forward. And it really is the only place you can put the garage. Uh, uh, if we're going to move the garage to this side of the house, because uh, we, if we used, if we actually put the garage inside the family room, tucked it back, like you're suggesting, um, we wouldn't have room for the kitchen and the family room. And we can't go over the old garage because it's in the aqueduct buffer. So, you know, the house, the property has these challenges and this idea was really to keep the same height of, of wall, the but same it's, angle it's of- It's set back the and it's behind landscaping. It's completely hidden now. You don't see that. You don't rec- it's, it's, it's a nice little sort of, it's set back. And now it's sort of, because the landscape drops away, right? You didn't, mm -hmm. could you have dropped the building? Could you have had a step up into the house? Now it's all flat, which we understand. And now it's sort of pushing out into that nice lawn. What was the photo like we were just you know, looking at? It's a small house, it's a to small show house. You. we yeah. get that it's a small house and needs to expand and your yes. desk and the move to the north, uh, sorry, to the east is very well done and handled in a, in a sort of nice way. And taking advantage of what's in the buffer already is a great idea, right? That you're, um, you're sort of converting what is in the buffer and um, footprint. Seems like a very good idea. Back, look at the depth of that garage. It's a, uh, you know, it's it's not a unusual size of a garage uh, uh, to get two cars. It, in what there. is its depth? I can't let see me, the number. Let me blow it up for you. Hold sure. on. It's as wide as the house. I can. <clears throat> it's 22 wide, which is, I consider a minimum for two cars in width, and the length is 24 feet. 
Again, I go back though to the, the original comment, which is part of what our task is, as you know, is that if we're to try to keep architectural style and character of the neighborhood cohesive, many of the garages in Ardsley Park are single car garages, detached single car garages. You, you have now designed something, added it to what was originally a very small house that has now been expanded twice, and you're putting a two car garage in the front of the house, making a curb cut and adding a new driveway. I personally think it is way too ambitious um, for a house that frankly is one of, is on one of the most beautiful streets in Arsley Park. And it's it started off as a 2,000 square foot house. And now I believe you have it well into almost 6,000 square feet. No, no, that's... Um, well, how, many, how many square feet is everything proposed? Well in. Um, I sent you a letter to clarify that. Um, it's, I think it's... Um, 5,000 square feet, hold on. The existing is 4,296 and the proposed is 5,304. Apology, I did not receive this letter, but still, okay, so 5,304, and it started out the existing, before you added the last edition, it was 2,100? I think so, yeah. You know, the, the goal of the project was to help get this um, kitchen backyard to work and, you know, if we can take a look at the garage, but it's, uh, I think where the kitchen is very small, so we are expanding the garage, the kitchen, um, and, um, you know, I think the garage location uh, seemed to be the best solution given all the other options. Um, the driveway that's right next to this, where this proposed driveway is, yes, has a garage off of it also, doesn't it? Yeah. Is, that a, is that a two-car garage or a one-car garage? I did go by, but I'm sorry, I don't remember. The original garage? No, next door, the property next door. There's a driveway that would be right next to the proposed driveway, right? Yes. That's the house? Yeah, yes. I was just wondering. I think 10 Hancock has a detached garage that's not used as a garage, but I think it's the size of a one, a one car garage. Is that next door? 10, 10 Hancock is next door. Nine is across the street. Oh, okay. This house here. You can't put a detached garage on um, to Hancock because of all the setbacks and the zoning requirements. Yeah, but you've just gone through a lot of planning and we've just, I, I think there was a lot of focus there and that's one of those planning questions you would wanna ask. You know, would they, would they tolerate that if it was a smaller footprint, if it didn't have as much impact on the architectural character of the story? I also go back to what you said originally in your presentation, which was the purpose of the design was to create a level yard for the use by the family to create some privacy. Um, if, if that was the, in, if that is the intention, we're also focusing and, and adding bulk and getting away from my opinion, the, the style and character of the neighborhood by the garage, the, by building this garage. So you're building a two car garage, but the original intent of the project from what I understood from your presentation, was really about creating privacy and a backyard for the family, not to create more garage space. So is, have, had you have you considered making the garage smaller, a one car garage? Uh, no, we haven't, um, we haven't done that. I mean, they, I, yes, the goal was really is to create this space in the back, uh, connected to the kitchen with the patio. And the only way to do that is to move the garage, but we can have a look at this and see what we can do about the size of it. Um, and, and also it's just, um, it was a very small kitchen, so we were expanding that, but the garage, they have a two car garage now. So it's, um, we were trying to put back the two car, a two car garage to take the place of the one that was there. Ken, reducing it in its size, would, would do you think that would help with the design and the elements that you spoke to? 
the only way to reduce it is to push it back into the structure that's there. But we could take a look at it. You know, I, I'm just looking down the block and there's, as, as has been noted, there's very few houses on this site, most probably because of the narrowness of the block that have full garages. They've tucked pools in, they've converted them to pool houses, they've created driveways with walk-ups. Just, it's, this is the, the garage is sort of, yeah, there's another independent on the opposite side of the street. The same there's one, sorry, there's the the one the one right on the opposite side did a long addition along the back side of the site and made that garage and created without any fence a nice flat lawn uh, that has a terrace on it with some plantings. Yeah, it's which house are you looking at? I'm looking um uh west west across um Hancock. Nine. And I'm just going to point out that it also the size of the lawn that was created by the fence there, which I think we agreed to, is relatively, you know, compared to the footprint of the house and in keeping with it. This lawn that's going behind a six foot six fence is grand. And even the grand lawns in, in Ardsley Park, which there are several, are landscaped around. There's no big fences that surround these lawns that are so special in the neighborhood. And most of the bigger lawns have a lot of uh, evergreens with deer fences inside them. Exactly. Over and over again, we yeah. see them. Well, could that fence maybe be tucked in a little bit more? Kind well, of, we can I just, mean, the backyard will be pretty significant with, with the driveway out. And I certainly understand that, you know, you need that backyard to have any kind of a yard. But to the side of the house. Yeah. Can that fence be brought in further? Yeah. I mean, we can... even, even in the ones where the garage is sort of towards the street on Erie, so they've mm -hmm. sort of turned them so they are, you know, perpendicular to the street, but at the same time, they have a smaller profile, not a, not a large kind of hulking mass. I mean, look at the elevation. It's, it's one, it's almost half of the elevation in width. And Ken, if you look at Bertha Place, you could look at half. I'm just going to say this. So the width of that garage, the 24 feet, or whatever it is with the enclosure, is more than half of the width of the facade of the existing house. <coughs> that's, not, that's not an addition. That's like a grand, a grand it's like a wall. I agree. And, and I just wanted to add that if, if you look at this side of Broadway, um, in particular Ardsley Park, and you go to the other side streets, whether it's Bertha Place or Clifton, again, you will see that most of the garages are detached and they're one car garage. In fact, 14 Bertha Place has no garage, seven Bertha Place converted the garage, but it's behind the house. I mean, the list goes on and we can go around to Clifton, same exact scenario. So you're actually in an area of Ardsley Park more so than any other area of Ardsley Park where this garage is not consistent with the style and architecture of the neighborhood. I think the idea actually I had in mind that this would feel like it's part of the house because, and the, the garage is sort of just hidden on the side, but we can take a look at that and just see if there's a way to reduce that this, this shape and the size of the garage and even the, um, the amount of uh, fencing that we have to make it not so uh, big a change and, and um, see if we can reduce the scale of it. I do want to speak to the fence though, if we're finished with the garage. Is, is, are there any other comments on the garage? Not for me. No. Um, yeah, I, I too agree with the earlier comments that I, I think that the fence, both in terms of the scale, the, the length of it, the height of it, the color of it, and the lack of, of landscaping are not consistent with the neighborhood. And I understand that the planning board has spent a lot of time looking at the aqueduct and the fencing and the planting there. But our particular role, as you know, is, is not the same as the planning boards. We're looking at scale and massing and materials and making sure that the neighborhood isn't um, 
destroyed, frankly, by certain elements. And I personally think that a fence such as the one you've designed changes the neighborhood um, significantly. And I, I would not be in favor of a fence that high and certainly not white without landscaping in front of it. And it does concern me once we start adding landscaping, however, since you are so close to the stop sign at the aqueduct on that corner, what that would do. So, you know, that's another issue yet to be discussed. All right, well, thank you for your comments. I'm gonna take a look at these ideas and see if we can uh, soften the design, but um, I hope we can find a solution that works because I know the owner really wants to invest in having this become a comfortable property. It's been a challenge even to the previous owner to find a way to have that private yard area off the kitchen. And um, I don't think there's any other way to do that except to relocate the garage. But I can take a look at it and see if there's a way to get this down in scale, perhaps. And also I'll take a look at the, um, the fence to see if we can have a more natural looking uh, edge and privacy border to that new yard area we're trying to design. Thank you. It's, is detaching the garage off the, uh, the table? I wish we could, but there's just not enough property and I don't think we can ever meet any of the, uh, the zoning regulations. We had to go to the zoning board because it's actually, uh, the house is all the way to one side of the property. I'm just trying to get to our site plan. And there really are very few options for where you can put a garage. There's just not enough space. The house is all pushed towards the uh, southeast corner up against the aqueduct. If you'll see the um, site plan, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna to try to go a little faster here. Um, our site plan shows the, the challenge that the house is non-conforming and setbacks because it's a long skinny house. It's pushed against this uh, southeast corner of the lot. And even though it has a beautiful yard, lots of space in front, it's um, far from the house, not accessible from the kitchen. It's not level, so uh, it's beautiful to look at, but it's not very useful for the, um, for the owners of the property. Well, I think what, what they're asking is really what the other houses have is the backyard. So I don't think that's in contention here. That's a very long driveway and, you know, so it doesn't allow for a yard, but um, I think it's just the scale of what's going to the front. All right, well, I'll take a look at these ideas. Thanks so much for your time and um, we'll come back to you. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, do one. I just think the white fence, I don't think it's a terrible fence style, but I do wonder why it has to go so far north. You know, it looks like, I, I don't think that's probably gonna be the usable yard in that sense, so you might, you know, I don't know why curtailing that quite a bit wouldn't be really helpful in this situation. I don't know how, how the rest of you feel, but, you know, you're trying to get backyard behind the house and that's way over to the north. And I don't know that that would be the usable space in terms of your backyard. That's a good point as well. All right, we'll take a look at that too. Okay. And also, just on the point though, and you have the you have the fence facing Hancock curved. Is that correct? Yes. I, I I don't know how the others feel, but that also doesn't look like it would be in keeping with any fence that I've seen in Orsley Park. Well, and that's why we brought up the fact that most of the fences uh, are black and are in uh, set in uh, a, a, usually an evergreen buffer. So we don't really see it. All you're really seeing is the evergreens. Yeah, we already have that going on here. So maybe we just continue that. We'll see. We'll take a look at that. Okay, okay thank you. Thank I you. Would give one, I would give one more comment about that, which is you've worked very hard to create that natural buffer along uh, the aqueduct. And we've seen that at um, Dow's Lane uh, with the newer, some of the newer houses. Perhaps it's carrying that green around 
in the same character as a long Hancock, meaning the lawn, there's both the public lawn that goes up to uh, a green edge, you know, so that there is a sort of buffer from the street, a little bit more than just the setback, mm -hmm. um, and that it's in keeping with the house's nature as a corner lot. That's, you know, it, sort of carrying that landscape around, because now it looks like it's just going to be grass, a lawn, may be good. The way that you see that um, all the way south on Hancock, where some of the landscape actually comes closer to the curb, in a way. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm being totally clear, but I'm just saying. <laughs> it's I know. Cute. Are you proposing uh, that kind of fence? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It's, I'm definitely not for the fence, but I'm saying could this landscape sort of do this or more, actually more like that? And that there was a longer breadth of uh, lawn that was going up to the house. I understand. Again. I know what you're saying. You know, the idea of the fence was because there's so, there's just no privacy at all for this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna see if we can do something that may combine the fence with um, landscaping. Um, and uh, a little more uh, of a natural or way than this is set up. So uh, I will come back to you with another option. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else from the board? No, thanks. Okay, I do want to recognize the fact that that uh, the ARB did in fact receive three um, letters from uh, very interested uh, neighbors. Um, most of which uh, spoke to the issue of uh, trees, the removal of trees, and um, uh, most of the issues that were 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 discussed were vetted in in a um, planning board in the the many planning board meetings that they had. In fact, there were I was told today there were three um, uh, public hearings that um, in fact they tell me they have no no minutes of anybody um, making any any you know negative comments to the uh, to the uh, application that was uh, set forth. Um, I don't want to um, you know rehash uh, issues that have already been litigated by the planning board, but I do think that if the um, the app the the people who who did send the letters were interested in in um, you know asking the planning board to go back and, and change something, that's certainly not through the ARB. That would be either through the building department or the board of trustees itself. I don't wanna you know, make believe that we don't have anybody uh, who's you know, not, ha not happy with this, this application, but I do wanna let everybody know that there's not a whole lot that the ARB can do. Uh, we have, as anybody who's, who was on this entire uh, application plan uh, saw, we did what we always do, and that's and that's you know look out for the integrity and the architectural integrity of of the, the buildings that are are on the applications uh, in front of us. So I don't want to you know let anybody think that we're we're not doing our job. We are in fact, but our job is very very limited. Um, so uh, with that, I will uh, thank uh, Christina Griffin for for the presentation, and we will wait to hear back from you. Great, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The next application will be uh, ARB 2020, uh, 47 Ardsley Avenue West, an addition as well. And the, the, I see the McLohorns have been waiting patiently. <laughs> Sarah. You, uh, you with us? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess we're going to have to put up the uh, 47 RZ MU West uh, issues. see the drawings? Yep, okay. I can. Um, now, what we're, we're planning to, to add a few small additions to this house and do renovation work 
to improve the front entrance, the kitchen, mudroom, patio in the back, renovate the garage and convert a, a small porch uh, to a uh, playroom. Um, we received um, zoning variances because you can see the, the setbacks, the house is entirely non-conforming. Um, each of these additions are done to improve the house. Uh, and I'm gonna just show you the existing uh, layout of the house. We have, uh, the entrance has no coat closet. There's no mudroom entry, uh, very congested kitchen. Um, and the porch on the right is, is needs to be renovated. Uh, and also on the second floor, we're planning to uh, renovate two baths and two bedrooms. Here's our exist our new plans. I'm skipping the structural. Uh, we're planning to on this first floor plan. There mm -hmm. is a new portico and entry, so we can add a closet to the house. And also because the entry right now is very nondescript, it's like a small, it's a little recess, and we were adding a very nice columned porch with a port with a balustrade on top. Uh, over the kitchen, we're adding a mudroom addition so that we can have an entry here to take the place of a very small porch. Uh, we're planning to just increase the kitchen by a few feet. We're replacing the patios, upgrading them. We're replacing the trellis. There's a, a metal trellis right now. We're adding a very nice uh, wood trellis with columns. Uh, we're replacing windows with LePage windows. This is uh, this porch is being converted into a playroom. And on the second floor, we're <clears throat> renovating two bathrooms and bedrooms, and at the same time, replacing windows and rebuilding uh, the dormer that's in front. Now, this is our uh, proposed um, addition at the front of the house. This is our new portico. We're planning to have very similar. Uh, treatment to the entry that's there. Right now, this is just a, a recess. We're keeping the bay window on top. We're replacing the windows on the facade and adding these shutters. These are painted wood shutters. Uh, and this is a, a dormer that we're adding to the second floor. We're actually renovating what's there because um, and creating a symmetry on this facade. The garage will be renovated, then there'll be new garage doors and a new uh, stimulated slate roof to come as close as to matching the existing slate roof, but in a different material. Sorry. This is the uh, rear elevation. This actually, uh, we always feel like looks like the front of the house. It's a beautiful facade. Uh, and currently there's uh, an old um, metal uh, trellis, we're taking that down, we're putting trellises that are uh, symmetrical with the French doors on each side of this entry. Uh, this is an existing roof and we're going to restore that and restore all the trim work on the house and replace the siding. Oops, this side elevation just showing the new porch. Uh, this side elevation is the um, Right, currently an open porch, it's deteriorating, so we want to take the opportunity to up, update it and enclose it. This is our um, new facade showing our new siding materials. Um, this is a composite type of cedar shake, uh, and cedar shingle, I mean. Uh, we're showing new shutters, uh, our new portico, uh, new roof material. The uh, garage right now has a combination of clapboard and vinyl siding. We're putting a nice new uh, sh uh, shingle siding on it, uh, new cupola. This is just showing the side of the house. This is the new mudroom entry with a little um, uh, gable roof. Um, this is our new roof and cupola over the garage. It's our real elevation. Um, just showing the all the materials that we're using here. We're going to restore or replace as needed the um, trim work that's on the house. This is a view with all our materials and here are some of the um, light fixtures we're using. 
Uh, we have um, just our color uh, scheme down below, showing our um, to going from the left to the right, our, uh, our new faux slate at the garage, our new light gray siding material. Um, we have some copper elements, our painted um, bluish gray shutters, um, which is showing that we're using stone at the patio. There are sections just showing uh, the small, these are just sections through the entry and the trellis. And cupola details. Now these are the photographs of the existing house. On the left, you see the front porch. This is what looks what it looks like now. We're planning to um, fill that in and come out with a new portico that kind of wraps around that existing bay window above. And if you see um, this, um, let's see control. I just want to get in a little closer so you can see mm -hmm. how the house looks now. You see all the. Um, oh, it's cedar. Mm. Yeah, it's painted cedar. We're taking out these windows. We're creating a, a symmetrical facade with new windows here. We're replacing this porch, this little porch, with a mudroom entry. Christine, uh, do you have any historic pictures of this? Was this a sort of carp, uh, craftsman style? It's sort of. Kind of when you look at the other facade, it looks like it was an expression, you know, the big timbers. You know, this is the best view of the house yeah. ever. It's very beautiful. I'll answer that. The back is, of the house. The homeowner. There's, there's no historic photos that we're aware of of this home. Yeah. I see. That's Alex um, McLaughlin, the owner. Um, Yeah, the, the front facade and the back facade look very different, um, but we we really um, appreciate want to upgrade the front to be have more of the stature of the rear facade, which has these beautiful gables and symmetries. Where we're going to, uh, and if you look hard, you'll see that some of the windows are inconsistent. We're replacing the windows with new ones that are are consistent with what we believe is was the original look of the house. You have nothing, no original, anything historic at all? Because it's sort of hard that just, I mean, this side of the house is just so sort of wonderful. You know, most of the houses that you see over in, um, uh, what's it called, Barney Park, that are like this are brown and have uh, darker wood expressions, almost timber-esque on that side of the house. I mean, look, it's just so different from the neighbors in every way. It's very unique. Like clearly that's the back of the house or was the back of the house. Uh, it's, it, it's hard to imagine that this was intended to be the front of the house. <laughs> yeah. But um, one reason why we, um, we took the opportunity to do work here is not just to, um, because of the layout of the inside, was also to upgrade the look of the front of the house. So we, we are creating us a, a very nice symmetrical uh, portico and we're redoing this facade and making the window symmetrical um, and upgrading the look of the house. So I'm gonna go back to this elevation after you see the photograph of the old house and then you look at what we're proposing, you can see that um, that very nondescript recess is now a very nice double column portico with a railing on top. Uh, we have added shutters to the facade um, and then we've also re, um, reorganized this facade here on this lower part so that there's a symmetrical layout of the windows. Also on the side of the house, we have a nice symmetry also with the windows. So the back of the house is really very much the way it is now, except the, the trellis that's there, you see a big 
old wisteria, but the old trellis is actually this very thin, wiry type uh, metal trellis and it's deteriorating. So we're replacing it with uh, uh, a composite wood type of trellis with columns. And we also want to uh, expose that entry there because this little gable roof is very nice at the entry at the back of the house. Christine, can we talk about the siding a little bit and, and the choice that was made uh, for shingles? Because I know that the house now is painted shingles, even though it's hard to tell uh, unless you're up close. It gives a look of being more wood clappered, which I understand wood clappered siding was more typical for Archley Park uh, as opposed to a shingle style house. Had you and your client considered uh, wood clappered as opposed to shingles? Um, I think we... Uh, Christina, I can so feel that if you Alex want. feels very strongly about this. Let him talk, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we considered all different options. Um, you know, it's a great point and uh, definitely appreciate your opinions on uh, what the siding is. I think we gave this a lot of thought and um, a couple things, you know, one, we really do want to respect um, the shingle uh, siding of the house. I mean, that's one of the things we liked about the house when we bought it. If you look at the areas where the paint has chipped, uh, it's clearly a, a white cedar. It's a very light wood underneath there. It's not a darker wood like you mentioned um, that you saw in Barney Park. Uh, at one point, the house was probably painted white. You can see that it was, th there's a couple layers of white paint before you get to the layers of blue. So it's gone through a few different changes over the years as best we can tell by looking at that siding. Um, so we're looking to, to restore to what we think it kind of looked like back in the day. Um, we don't really know. There's no historical uh, documentation that we're aware of. Um, but, you know, I think this is a this is aesthetic that we think will look nice and will complement the neighborhood, bring a little bit of variety too, instead of just having all clapboard have a little bit of architectural variety with the shingle as well. And there are some other shingle homes in the neighborhood. So I think we considered that very carefully in terms of the material choice. We also consider that quite carefully. I mean, I think we went into it thinking that would be a purely natural material. Um, you know, that would, that was my bias going into it. Uh, however, um, in talking to several different contractors and talking to some building suppliers and that sort of thing, they really felt that uh, a natural uh, or any sort of cedar shingle in this air in this area doesn't really weather that well. It doesn't stand up to the test of time all that well. And they recommended, you know, several different products. We chose what we think is a, a premium product uh, for the for the siding. It's um, actually a little bit more expensive than cedar, um, but it, it it is applied exactly like cedar. Uh, so it's it's applied to the side of the house the same way. It does natural corners in the exact same way. Each of the individual shingles has its own texture to it, so it's not just a, uh, a stamp pattern uh, across the front of the house. Um, I'll try to turn on my video. I mean, I can show you what one looks like. I have one here. What are they made of? They are a PVC type of material, mm -hmm. but it really, if you have one in your hand, you would never guess that it's a PVC material. So the shape of it is just like a, natural cedar shingle. It comes in a variety of different widths. Um, and again, mm -hmm. it's applied the exact same way. I mean, uh, obviously we would love for you guys to have had samples to hold, uh, but we were told that that wasn't going to be a possibility with the COVID-19 uh, issue going on right now. But if you really held it in your hands and our contractor held it in his hands, has the exact same feel as cedar and really applies the same way and looks really identical. So, you know, this is, this is a, 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 I think, an advance probably in the siding that you've seen perhaps in the past. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this one before, uh, but I think it's something we gave a lot of thought to. Uh, again, going into it with a bias of cedar, but really understanding the limitations of that product and what this product's advantages are over natural cedar. And what was your color choice again? I think this is, this image that up is up, I, I'm sorry. Um, not that one. <laughs> not this one, the bluish gray the one. The gray one, the grayer one. This yeah, one. that's what I thought. I mean, I had the same concern because I didn't feel that, I, I think it's a beautiful look. Um, I just haven't seen it in that, in that area. So I know you said there were, there were others. Could you just tell us where those might be? 
I think in terms of seed, in terms of shingling, there are other homes, even right across the way, the, across the way is a mixture between uh, shingles, or right across the street from us is a mixture of shingles as well as clapboard. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, I can't remember the exact addresses of all these things, but you know, the, there are certainly other single cedar shingles or other shingled homes in the area. Um, does it look exactly like this one? No. Are there other gray homes in the neighborhood? Certainly our neighborhood, our neighbors uh, just next door have a, a gray clapboard. So, I, know, I know there are gray. It was more the material that it gives it, a, you know, just a slightly, I don't want to say beachy look because obviously this is a very upscale beachy look, but um, yeah, no, just sort of a different kind of area. Sure. I, I mean, my opinion, um, just I think it brings some variety uh, to the architecture that's not just a you know cookie cutter of every other home that's in the neighborhood. Um, I think that it's, you know, obviously it's my opinion. I've given this a lot of thought over half a year or more of time, but um, I think it's going to complement the neighborhood. You know, we've had two letters of support from our neighbors uh, over this project. Um, so I'll stop there. I also want to mention that I, I've worked on lots of different styles of houses and I felt uh, that this, this choice made the house look more like a shingle style house, which it looks more like in the back, on the back facade. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked, just shocked over the over paying more than cedar because cedar is what we all build with everywhere, whether it's on the toughest areas of um, Martha's Vineyard or um, Nantucket or Rhode Island. I mean, I just I'm, I'm I know this material. I don't. I would never ever choose it selected for a client. It's just you get within six feet of it and you know what it is because it never changes, it doesn't age, doesn't have, it has a certain character. Are all the trim pieces like um, also made out of PVC and the window and the frames and the... We're planning to restore what's there. And all the shutters are real wood and painted. Could you, go, uh, could you also go back to the uh, photograph of the back of the house just for a second? Sure. You know, just in terms of the selection or so of um, the siding and to your point, you know, I think if we were go to do a natural cedar and I'm not inclined to do that, um, you know, we would go with a pre-painted uh, shingle for, you know, because it's not going to weather well in this area. We've gotten that I'm feedback from multiple. You keep saying that. That's not true. It That's the feedback we received. It weathers just fine in the mid-Atlantic states. It's used all the time. There's houses in the area, not in this particular area, but maybe more in Scarsdale, and it's weather's just fine. And okay. it's, if it's treated and everything, that's that's somebody's that's a salesman's line. I'm sorry, I'm not calling you a salesman. Just that's the line I've heard over and over from salesmen. It's not a natural material. It is stiff. Its color is it's sort of sometimes a little bit shocking when you see it, and I've seen it. And all those new houses look great on day one. They really, you know, it looks like it's meant to be photographed. Yeah. Um, and yet cedar over time, especially if you paint it the gray that you're talking about, has a life to it and it changes and it keeps, it's in keeping with the neighborhood. Um, all the pieces that go along with that. And it's the simplest thing in the world to, um, at some point, if you want to paint it, you can paint it. If you want to replace the pieces, they come right out. It's not something that rots on the whole, especially if it's the cedar that people are growing these days. Okay, I just, I'm, I misunderstood one detail here. It's fine. I saw it, I saw the detail. Is this what you were looking for, this picture? This was the, that's it, that's it. I thought that the um, bays were framed with timber, but they're not. They're just, um, the cedar wraps around it. I mean, I, I will say again on cedar, and, and, and I, it's, it's such a, it's a difficult position to be in because obviously you have put a lot of thought into this and, and we want to honor yeah. what you want to put on your home. At the same time, as you know, if you, especially if you just listen to us with the last application, is that while it 
homeowners like to be unique with their property, you happen to be in Ardsley Park with a very visible house close to the street, which means it's not landscaped and set back, so no one's going to notice the siding or the, you know, the treatment of the material you put up. And our objective is to keep with the architectural style and character of the neighborhood, not to create these one-off homes that are unique and you know, aspirational for different owners because then we destroy the character of the neighborhood. Not that I think shingles will do that, but when you couple it not doing a natural shingle, then we also start to step back and say, is this the right application? For me personally, knowing the neighborhood as well as I do, this to me, your house always reads like Clapper, even though it is shingle, but when you step back and when you look at the other houses in the neighborhood, that's what I, that's what I see for this house, but that's just my opinion. The second part of what you've done is you've had shutters to the front and, and it's not a house that, that is designed with shutters. If you look at the back, there will be no shutters. So when I also drive around the neighborhood looking at homes with shutters, they're clappered houses and the shutters are natural to the design if they're present at all. And the shutters have a, a, not the look of your shutters, quite frankly. They're wood shutters that are different on every single house. So I know the look you're, you're creating but it's something that, in my opinion, does not look like it's in keeping with the neighborhood. So I am, I am struggling with it. I just, I need you to know that. But I may be alone in my thought. Well, you know, the house almost has two facades. You right. know, if you look closely at the rear facade, you see cedar shingles, you see mitered corners, you see exposed um, uh, rafters, and. Right. It's so much, almost like more of a shingle style, but then when you go to the front of the house, um, which I think everyone can agree can be improved, it, it, it looks more like um, a, uh, from a distance, it almost looks like clapboard and it's a very flat facade, which is why we wanted to introduce the, the shutters. I think it's a beautiful house. I think it's beautifully simple in the front as well. So I understand what you're you're doing. You also have somebody here who think. I mean, I think it's it's, it's an absolutely beautiful house. Um, so I don't see the need for the shutters in order to make the house more attractive. But it's more my point that it's not. Again, the, both, the combination of both don't look to me to be consistent with the rest of the neighborhood. And it rings out especially so because you got shutters on the front but not on the back. It doesn't seem to be. I put up this, this this photograph just so you can see this is the front of the house and see how different it is from the back. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have the gables, doesn't have the exposed raptor tails, can't see any mitered corner shingle details. It's it's a, a very different facade. So that's why we wanted to break up the wall while the entry is a nice focal point with the columns, but the shutters was just to break up the the flat wall that exists, you know. You know, there's something, um, it's interesting that you say that because I would say that it, that um, like the balloon frame, that it, pro it probably is balloon frame. And, um, you know, these, this long volume, I'm, I think of the, you know, Scully book on this, but they were these volumes that sort of expanded and were inflated. And then there were things that were added to it, you know, beams and uh, bays and all sorts of things. And there was something like to that. I'm not going to argue too much. It, it just had that character to it, that it was a very simple, plainer facade, a volume that had holes poked in it, you know, in a sort of random, funky way. You know, the two over one and then three over this. It's like a, it's like a dice, two dice. Um, it's it just had this sort of character, unique character. I mean, it really is a unique facade. It's very different than what else that, that's there. And I get that you wanted to have a, a grander entrance, and I, I I won't fight that. Though I thought this was sort of quite cute in its way. I agree with you, Ken. But I also understand that the back seems to have so much more character. You know, or a different, grander, such a way. different character yeah. that I have no problem with. You know adding to it i can understand your need to do it for me it's really the siding choice that um you know i'm having some difficulty with so i think that's been a theme for us for quite some time with the um i mean i know we had we approved a uh a house on uh riverview 
that uh, the owner insisted that it was considerably less expensive to do the plastic uh, versus the uh, cedar. And in fact, we relented uh, because of that reason, but that's not the case here. And it's, I think we're all gonna have a hard time um, swallowing, you know, the plastic veneer uh, versus, or PVC veneer versus, um, you know, cedar. <clears throat> You know, the funny thing just about it, it would, it's too bad that you couldn't see this, um, is that a lot of these houses that did the um, did uh, the shingles would do all sorts of fancy patterns with them, um, you know, scallops and things like that, especially up in the eaves. I just wonder if as you're going through this, you find another layer underneath. It would be wonderful to know if that type of detail was there or even could be added. Uh, that, I'm not saying to do that. I'm just saying it's something that these houses all have. You see it in the village all over the place, um, you know, up in the eaves and some details. Mm -hmm. It looks like at some point they laid on the, and I guess you guys, you did take some off to see what was underneath um, over time uh, in your um, studies. No, I, I think the original house had the shingles. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying were there pattern shingles, were there scallops, were there things like that that was... Buried. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we'll find something. Yeah. Okay. Where, we, where do we want to go here now? Is it the feeling that if we were voting today, it wouldn't be a, uh, a positive vote? Well, I guess, I, I don't know if Alex is still on, but is, are, are we, is the submission is as is, the, or are you reconsidering? Because I just saw you stepped off. No, I'm still here, just listening. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to come to a resolution uh, now um, over this. It seems like the main uh, hiccup here is the siding material. Um, you know, I think if you're not, if there's no room to budge on that, I would, you know, I'd like to figure out a way to get to resolution now. Um, you know, I would say that um, the economic decision on these, this sort of siding is not just a, a one-time uh, cost. Um, you know, if you're looking at either, if you're looking at a natural siding, there obviously is a, an upkeep to that. If you, if you want to paint, a painted siding, obviously you're going to be uh, painting every you know five to ten years is from what I understand. I know that's what the Siemens uh, did uh, uh, prior. They painted every five to ten years is what they told me. Um, and so there's certainly a cost to painting your whole house every uh, you know five to ten years. There's also a, a cost to treating uh, shingles if you're going for a natural uh, look there. So you know if you discount uh, those costs to you know present times or so. Um, I'm a doctor. I don't know anything about uh, all that, but. Uh, it, my sense would be if you discount those costs, then um, you may still be ending up with a more expensive uh, outlay if you go for a natural thing, if we're looking at cost. Um, you know, these are all just kind of went into our considerations in choosing a product that we thought would weather well. And, um, you know, I think we talked to hopefully people that don't have a skin in the game. Um, and, and maybe we talked to some people that do have skin in the game in terms of what they're selling us. But um, we felt like we did our due diligence. Uh, however, if that's really not, um, if there's not a way to come to agreement on that, then, you know, I guess our choice would probably, our, our next choice was going to be more of a, a painted um, shingle like we, like we already have, maybe, but different color. Um, painted or stained? Um, well, again, our, our understanding from, you know, from looking at a few houses around here, and I know that there's some disagreement here, but this is this is our opinion, and I think a lot of this is opinion, um, is that the uh, paint tended to look a little bit better in terms of the way that weathered around here. But um, again, maybe that's a matter of opinion. I always think it's a matter of maintenance. Um, I did have one other yeah. question. What was what was the uh, shingle on the roof? Are you so our our the main home is a natural slate. Uh, we're going to just repair that and um, get matching slate. There's areas that were patched that um, with 
uh, shingles that didn't match and we're gonna get everything to match and look very nice. <clears throat> and then for the garage? The garage is gonna be this EcoStar product. Um, uh, right now it's an asphalt uh, fiberglass um, product and we wanna make, we wanna select a shingle that um, matches, you know, they can, it has all sorts of different textures and colors and that sort of thing. Um, so you can match or pretty closely match what uh, the natural slate looks like of our home um, and kind of upgrade that. I mean, it's a, it's a green product. It's made from recycled materials. It's recyclable itself. Um, so we think that's a good option. And, um, you know, it's a very small facade of that, um, of the garage that's sort of publicly facing at the end of the driveway. And it's quite a distance from the road. Um, I think at that distance, you know, it's probably not going to be evident. Uh, given the size and, and what it looks like. And again, that's certainly an expense um, issue, you know, yeah. to, if you want to do, and seems a little bit, um, it would be hard for me to, to bite off doing natural slate on a yeah, detached uh, garage. Understood. Um, can you just go back to the picture of the garage for one second? I think, I think there's a, uh, okay. Um, I'm not going to ask if that's a folding or roll up door on the garage. Is that a, you know, it's, that? It, it's going to be a roll up door, but you can make them look like. Uh, no, 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 no. I just was asking. It was it looked like a four panel folding, but that's fine. I'm not going to ask. I just wanted to understand what it was. Uh, we're also a little concerned about the weight of real slate on the, the very, um, sure. you know, the small roof members that exist. Uh, that's and the gutter uh, gutters are going to be copper or yes. copper. Copper, yeah. And are the shutters wooden shutters that you're going to paint, or are they also a prefab? Wood, wooden cedar. And 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 the shutter design is that one that you especially liked, or did you look at others? Because if you look at Hancock, there's quite a variety in the shutter designs. So I I mean I think that's a traditional style i you know i guess it's um i know there's some that have the little cutouts in them and that sort of thing and um yeah i mean i, I guess it could go anywhere but uh I, I think that's a traditional the house i grew up in had those shutters i you know i don't know so are we looking at shutters on three sides or just just one side it's on three sides it's sort of what i would consider to be i'm not an architect obviously um but the sort of colonial sides of the home if you will right. i think that the uh windows that we've selected to have shutters they're architecturally appropriate it's not like we're putting them around picture windows or around casement windows or whatever these are all double hung uh windows that we're putting the shutters around uh, which windows are these christina they're um on the the front elevation the double hung windows on the side elevation the double hung uh, what, windows i guess i was asking what manufacturer or line uh, of the page the page uh, you okay. know they're gonna have a, a, a you know historical match of the munton yep the, the back of the house has a series of uh french doors all across the first floor and then above all these um you know rows of uh double hungs uh, so there it's a different it's a very different house it has a lot of these bay windows and yeah. it it's very different there's uh the, the it's a much more interesting facade but the front facade and the sides looks very almost colonial as as alex said in style could you do me one favor go back to the photograph one more time it's just um because there's this it looks like you're just repeating it. The detail on the eaves is nice. That where the it curves down, that's the detail throughout the house. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that, that's this is existing. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, really, it's a very um, special house. Yes, lovely house. Okay, how are, we gonna, how are we gonna present this now? I would uh, make a motion to uh, approve as the application 
stands and would expect that to go down in flames. Um, but I will, I will make that, uh, make that uh, decision to go, to go ahead with that unless anybody wants to uh, curtail that and, and change the um, siding now before the vote. I mean, again, my reservation is we've been closed a porch, you've added a new entrance, you've added shutters, you're changing the color, you're adding the, the, the now what's going to look very much like a shingle as opposed to clapboard, which again, we thought there's trellis on the back, not trellis on the front. I mean, there's a lot of things we could talk about here, but I think at the end of the day, it sounds like it's the siding that most of us have the, have the biggest, is the biggest challenge. Is, is that fair? I mean, I, I kind of don't have a sense of where we all are either. No, I agree with you. I really hate for this to go, not mm -hmm. to be approved. I know how much work, time, and effort has gone into this. And this is a young family who's just trying to get a renovation done by the end of the summer, I'm sure. Um, is that where, I mean, starting with you, Ken, is that, is that the biggest challenge, the siding, or is there something else that we really... Well, that's it, the siding. Gail? It's just the siding. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, and beautiful choices, by the way, in many other areas. So. Michael? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Okay. Um, can, can we approve it without the siding choice? And, and give, give the client and Chris now? No, it's, it's, it's intertwined. Um, I don't know if I'm out of turns talking here. Um, I mean, if we just say we're going to change, I mean, what's going to change if I resubmit it with the same materials next time, right? I mean, it's going to be the same issue, correct? Correct. So to get this passed, it sounds like we just need to change the siding material. Do a, a paint, would, can we agree on a painted cedar? Folks? Uh, I think what you said was a light gray. Uh, yeah. With the white trim and the turquoise, I think I, I think we could agree to that. I but I'd uh, like to hear from the others. Yes, I agree. That works, Randy. Yeah, that works. Okay, Deb. I think so. And, and Ken, will it have more of a look of as it does today, more of a clappered as well? And if it's painted, yeah. I, I think that's for me. That that is a good solution. Doctor, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Well, if you want to get it done right now, that's I think what we're going to have to do. Do I have a motion to approve the application as amended with the uh, gray painted cedar shingles? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's a done deal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank folks. You. Just bear with me one second, folks. I got to make notes. Okay, moving along. Uh, ARB 20-21, 27 North Dutcher Street, Fence. You know, I think she's, she's going to try to come the next time. You know, it, it presented, I know that she sent some things to Sarah. They did. She sent, sent yeah. something that I would have approved, but. Uh, you know what? It was only one fence. And the backyards, you know, I walked over and she spoke to me this afternoon or this morning. And, you know, there's different chain link on every side of the house. Because, you know, you know how our yards are. They interface with so many different properties. So right. anyway, she just, I said, you know what, you could just not show up and figure it out and, you know, present in okay. a couple of weeks. Because so. what they shown uh, actually very closely matched the, the uh, fences in the front of the house. That's why I, I was willing to, to go ahead with it. It was, but. it was only one fence, though. Then they had two different one's chain links on the other two sides. So, you know, yep. she was really struggling with it. So I just said, well, you know, why don't you think it over? Okay. 
Okay. We will continue it uh, until uh, next month. And, and remind me to talk about next month before we get off the, uh, the phone call. Okay. okay, moving along to uh, ARB 20-22, 5 Barber Lane, deck. Do we have anybody making a, uh, oh, Mr. Faustini? Yes, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Do we have, uh, Sarah, could you put up the application? Should I just share my screen? Or? If if you have it, if you have the application on your screen. Let's see. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, I am. Yeah, I, I know. I assume everybody else is. Mr. Faustini, could you please uh, uh, tell us who you are and, and who you represent? Yes, my name is Nick Faustini. I'm an architect. I'm representing the Lipsky residents. Okay. Uh, this application is for a, um, a rear yard treated wood deck, uh, approximately 15 by 15 and about three feet above grade. Um, the, the actual grade slopes, so at one side it's three feet and at the other side it's about six and a half feet. Um, you'll see, I'm just going to zoom in on the plot plan. So this red hatched area is the proposed new deck. Um, there was actually a deck there previously, but it was much larger. Um, it was, if you see the pan or the hand here on the screen, mm -hmm. it was about that size. Um, the deck was deteriorated and was taken down several years ago. So we're looking to replace the deck with a much smaller footprint. Um, so this is the proposed deck area. Here, 15 by 15 with several steps down to grade level. Um, as you come around, this area of the yard is flat, relatively flat. Then it's down several more steps. So this is, at this area, you can begin to walk underneath the deck. Um, and if we're underneath the deck, it's supported by three posts and there's a door to the basement. Yeah, are, that's the, existing. are the three posts or the, the foundations existing? Are you reusing the old? No, these are new foundations. Uh, they're new posts and sauna tubes. There is a um, perimeter railroad tie retaining wall here that is stained. So where I'm just highlighting here, this wall is stained. And I'll show you in some photographs what it looks yeah. like. The photographs are very telling. Yeah, um, so just basic section details um, and then just an exterior rear yard elevation of the area of work. And I will just go to the photographs. Yeah, before you leave that, uh, well, just tell us what the materials of the decking is, the, the uh, railings, the uh, caps on the railings. The, um, the owners uh, have elected to use treated wood for the structure and for the finishes. So just okay. pressure treated um, natural wood. Do you have an okay. elevation of the, where you walk underneath the deck? I don't think so. um, I have a photograph. Um, so you can see the former deck joists here. Mm -hmm. So this is the portion where you'd walk underneath and that's the basement door. So the deck will be at this elevation. Are, um, you, uh, are you reusing the existing trellis? Looks like it, are they? This, uh, no, this is, I think was just put up temporarily as a barrier. Uh, okay. Some of it's fallen down, but I intend to close the bottom of the deck with lattice also. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you see, I think what you're referring to is this image. It's just closing the bottom of the deck. Um, all the way around. Okay. Here, all the way around, yeah. And the planning board asked us to plant, to also plant some arborvitaes on this side here, that the area that's out of the ground quite a bit, um, just to provide some screening from the neighbor to the south. Okay. Um, so I will go back to the photos. Um, so this is that pressure treated railroad tie retaining wall that's gonna remain. Our deck will be at this elevation. Um, so it'll cover most of this. The two arborvitaes we planted here and here to screen this area. Um, these photos are just for context. This is a, a view of the rear of the yard. Um, this is a view of the front of the house, and this is the opposite end of the property. Um, this is a view of the back. So our deck will be at this area here, and it'll cover this sunken um, 
sunken area under the deck. This is a fine point, but the deck where you're planting the arbiv arbivite, how wide is that right there? You said you were going to do two. That's why I wondered if it would really, you uh, know, here, the screening that you want. So just one here and one there. How wide is this area? Um, yeah. I believe it's about 10 feet. Yeah, I wouldn't um, think two would do it, right? Um, I'm just saying so, maybe yeah. expand it to three. I just think that it's probably a better design move and I think it would give you better coverage. Okay, uh, yes, I mean, so it's about 10 feet. So I think there would be no objection to planting two if that would be preferred, I mean, three if that were preferred. I think that's a good idea. On the notes on the uh, the deck, it says composite on it. I'm trying to read that. Oh, did it, did you say it was here. pressure treated? Yeah, um, that was probably a typo from an earlier project. This the finished schedule here would be pressure treated wow. color natural. Um, this, by my apologies, this should just say one by six treated wood decking instead of composite. Okay. Anybody no else? Comment. Any questions? No comment. Randy, you good? I'm good. Okay, Gail, all right. Michael, yes. okay? I'm okay. Deb, will we lose you? I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, I would make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? So second. Moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. ARB 20-23, 75 West Clinton Avenue, fence. We'll wait. Okay. They're probably going to sleep, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, you're you're on mute. Okay, there we go. Hi everyone. Uh, hello. Hi. Um, I'm Rachel Blitzer Broadhead. I'm the homeowner. Um, you may remember that I presented this project to you last year and um you had a couple serious issues with it. The first was that where the line of the fence was appeared to be outside of our property line or on an abatement or something to that effect. Um, and you couldn't approve it at that time. But it was also at that time a white picket fence, which you didn't like. Um, so we've addressed both of those issues. Let's see if I can do the share screen as well as everybody else can. Um, yeah. So we have changed both of those issues. Um, now the only bit of external fence will be right here. And then maybe and then a tiny piece over here on the right that you can't quite see. But the, the main area we're talking about was here. There will be a fence, external visible fence here, and it will be um, not wrought iron, but an aluminum that's meant to mimic wrought iron. Um, I took so long in coming back to you guys because I got a bunch of samples from New Map Fence who are working with, and I, you know, thought each of them looked a little bit cheap, um, and I didn't like it, and I knew you guys wouldn't like it, but I finally found at this American Design Fence Company out of New Jersey, um, you can't really see it here, but they make a matte material that I think looks really nice, and from any serious distance you, you know you can't really tell the difference between it and various treated wrought iron fences in um in this style so that would be the fence that would be visible from the street and what um, color black okay um and then um on the interior so now this would be inside the tree line we wanted to put a mesh fence just to make sure the kids stay enclosed but it wouldn't be visible um, on either side. You're talking about like a deer fence style? 
Yeah, I mean, New Mac calls it mesh. Um, I, I think Deer Fence is probably the same. Uh -huh. Did they give you a, a sample of, or something to show us what it looks like? <laughs> um, they sent some pictures, uh, which I had included in my prior application. I sorry I didn't include it here because I didn't change it. Um, but it it was very, you know, it was the, the first thing that comes up kind of when you Google mesh fencing. Um, I think deer fence is the is exactly what it is. It is in the packet that we have. It's like last page can we go back back i don't think it's here all the way in the back all the way to the back too yeah. nylor welded mesh i think you must be you must have in front of you a different the paper for that i previously submitted last year when we were talking about um, that fence for the first time. I could try to pull that back up, but you now I can show you that it was. Yeah, it's on our PDF in the email, which which would make me assume that it would be on this PDF. We never yeah, got to that. would have thought so. Um, it was just a very simple black fence like this that was meant to um, disappear into the trees. It's going to be rough to prove it when we don't know what it is. It, it, it actually says here it's handwritten black welded mesh, yeah. four foot high. Yeah. Is that it? I yeah. see it. Yeah, it's the last page. It's 57 in our packet. Could you, just go to, could you just go to the last page on, on your presentation? Well, I think you, let's see. Okay, I can try. I think what you must have gotten from Sarah is a little different from what I submitted to her. What, uh, what Sarah did was the, the original packet is merged with the new one. So the last page of our packet has that uh, original submission from the Deer family. Sarah, can, Sarah, can you bring that up? Uh, I, yeah. Well, I can share it. I got it. You have it? Yeah. Don't, don't kill yourself, Sarah. Let, let uh, Ken bring it up. Okay, no problem. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, you need to stop share, share. Sure. Okay. Nope, not that. You see it? Yep, okay. I see it. Okay. So, uh, is that what you're referring to? Right. Okay. <clears throat> Can you enlarge it, Ken? Sure. Do we know how tall that's going to be? Four feet. Four feet. How tall is the uh, aluminum fence? Four, four feet. Okay. Why is doing this thing? I don't know if it's got the pixels to get yeah. any better when it gets. No. I, can, uh, I can bring that particular photograph up on. No, it's fine. I think we got it. Yeah. Yep. Well, why is it doing this? Yeah. I'm good. Okay, could you go back to the uh, site plan? Just so we can once again see where everything is going. Sure. I'm gonna like, stop sharing. Okay. Okay. So back to the site plan. Um, so here's West Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, here is where the aluminum wrought iron looking fence would go and there would also be a little piece of it here um, off of King Street, the private street, just to finish closing out the backyard. And then all along here are 
the trees are the arborvitae. And then we would have that wire fence that we were just looking at, you know, just inside of them. Do you have a gate in here? I'm sorry? Is there a gate? I, it just doesn't yeah. indicate where the gates are. Yes, oh, I'm sorry, it's a bad, poor drawing, I guess. Um, the gate, there would be a gate here mm -hmm. that opens um, out like this. How big is the gate? Three feet. And also a gate here that opens this way into the backyard. Also three feet? Yes. Okay, and um, well, obviously the same same material. Yes. Okay. Now, what is what is the the part that's not being replaced? What what is that fence along the uh, the property line? There's a six foot high white fence. It's made of vinyl. It seems like it's supposed to mimic wood, I guess. Um, a privacy fence between the two houses. Okay. Is it on your property or? I think it is on our property just because it's on this drawing of our property. Um, we, I believe it was put in by the previous owners. Okay. I mean, yes, I know, I know that it is on our property. Okay, any questions from the board? Nope. No, nope. Deb? Okay, do I have a motion to approve? Um, I'm going to say as amended because I have to put the uh, okay. the two fences in okay, the two sorry. gates rather two gates. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. Okay. Um, what I need for everybody to do is look at the schedules for next month. Um, the end of the end of the we're going to go towards a uh, last uh, or fourth Monday um, meeting. Uh, for, for now, it's going to be electronic unless things get better. But at this point, uh, because of the um, going electronic on on all the uh, applications coming to us, uh, they they are going to have to have us uh, look at them two weeks before the meeting. We'll be able to go online and take a look at, at, at everything that's on there and, uh, you know, send in any c questions, comments. It'll eliminate, you know, uh, simple projects that, that don't have any issues uh, so that we don't have to carry them to the next meeting. We can actually approve those uh, um, in absentia, so to speak. Um, but we're trying to get um, everybody to to get together on the last or the fourth Monday uh, of the month, and um, at Memorial Day next month. Well, that's the problem. The okay. question is, uh, they wanted to make it the eleventh. It didn't make much sense. It's too early, mm -hmm. and then it would be too long a stretch for the next meeting. So what they were talking about is is um, having the meeting the day after Memorial Day, which is Tuesday, or the Wednesday. The Tuesday um, wouldn't break my heart if we couldn't do it on the Tuesday because that's the um, uh, zoning board uh, night. Um, whether they're gonna have the meeting or not, I don't know. But um, So we need to just look at your schedules, send me a note on what you think would be better Tuesday or Wednesday of that week and I'll get back to you. I'll tell you now, I'll tell you now Wednesday's gonna be better because Tuesday I'm supposed to be up in Albany. Not okay. that I'm going to be getting, not that well anybody's going, but that's I'm supposed to be in Albany that day. Anybody else have any questions? Wednesday's fine with me. It's fine with me also. Oh, I, I definitely cannot make it Tuesday, uh, the 26th. I should be able to make it the 27th, but I'm not sure yet. Randy? I'm good either way. Okay, so Sarah, are you on the line still? Yeah, I'm here. Would you please uh, schedule us for, for that Wednesday after Memorial Day? Sure, not a problem. I appreciate it. And anybody else have any old new business that, that needs to be discussed? Uh, Rick, I, I, I did have ahead. one question. Um, the letter that, that got posted tonight that Christine had written in response to our questions, did I miss that or did we not get it? Because I, I, I didn't I didn't see it. I, I, I don't know. I didn't get it either. Didn't get it. So can we make a note of that too? Because I, I that was a little awkward that she had actually answered the questions we submitted. And if we're going to do this again, um, I would right. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen. So 
I don't know whether or not I, I, I don't think that, that, you know, I'm 99.9% .9 sure I didn't see it. Um, I know I I'll, didn't see it because I was looking for your letter before we got on and I couldn't find it. And, um, but you know, those other letters came in so late, you know, it didn't give her much response time. So, right. Right. Well, let's, we'll, we'll get better when it comes to getting everybody to do it a full two weeks before the, the meeting, you know, have everybody go on and look at it because our responses will then go to the architects and or applicants um, and, and they can respond to it and we can go from there. So, okay. I'm recording, Ed. We think that email went out late tonight. Um, okay. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. we usually don't accept them, but because it seemed so contentious, I thought we'd try to get them to you. Okay. Um, do you know, or Sarah, do you know if the nomenclature of the files is in your control or the system's control? Because everything, it didn't, it, the number didn't match our number, the names didn't match our names when we were downloading the files. It's not a big deal, but do you know if there's a way to make, to tie the two together? Yeah, when, once um, they're in the system, they, they have a number through the, uh, the archiving system. Mm -hmm. it, it's really more... You're going through an archive, you're not going through the applicant. In right. fact, when they upload them, they don't even have a number yet. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting because I don't have any problem looking at those files at all. No, I'm I didn't surprised. have any problem. I just couldn't remember which one was which one. Oh, okay. I actually retitled and put them on my screen before the meeting. That's what I did. <laughs> all I, right. Yeah. Any other questions, concerns, issues? I thought it went well for our first time out. So yeah, I thought so too. Great, bravo, bravo, Rick. Fortunately, fortunately, our applicants, <laughs> fortunately, our applicants know how to manipulate a uh, drawing when they take control of the. Uh, you know, it, there is a fundamental here, which is, um, and maybe it's on your checklist, Ed, is that the samples, we're, since we can't, um, since we can't get them, unless we came, with the, went outside is perhaps we should ask for photographs of the samples again in some way, shape or form. There, there, is, no, there is no checklist from the ARB. We've been waiting for one from, from oh, you. Back at you. Back at you. We're, we're happy to post it if you, if you guys develop it. We have, we have this one started if you want us to send it out. Is, is there a reason the photographs look like they've been scanned and faxed and then stored? Yeah, but, but you know, it depends on how it comes into us. Um, That's a good point. You know, you a know, lot of the stuff comes in. Our, if they upload it, it, it gets black and white and automatically. If they hand it to us or it's in a package and we scan it, we will be scanned in color. But remember, it's a scan of a photograph. It's not a true PDF. We're trying to get them to upload um, and, and submit memory sticks, and it's new to everybody. So we're getting a little bit of compliance with that. And that should. Everything should get a little better through time. Okay. We, the other thing I was wondering, in terms of like that sample of the shakes that he was referring to, and there was so much discussion on that, I mean, would it ever be possible to, you know, go to the Tiffany room or somewhere to see that sample? We're not allowed to leave anything in the Tiffany room. But well, we, our, our goal at, is, your, at your window or somewhere because... Um, yeah. Uh, that's, that our, our goal is once the town hall is back open is to put a shelf outside the Tiffany room okay. and we can put those samples there along with all the packages. Yeah. Okay. I don't I don't know if that was to his advantage, sorry to say. But yeah. I, yeah. I, I think, well, I think you, you understood it though. Yeah, thank you, Ken, for giving us all that information on it because without having it there, that was tough. I mean, my gut was not to. <laughs> I think we blew his, his cover when um when we told them about the Riverview Road uh, situation where it was considerably less expensive to do it in, in plastic as it was in cedar. Yeah, but yeah. anyway. Well, he, he, huh? was losing, he was missing excuses after a while too. That's all right. Yeah. I That's mean, all right. All right. Put, when you're doing all that beautiful work, you know, it seemed like to put plastic on the house was just. Yeah. I, I, I almost gave him the address to, to go look at what that house looks like because it, it looks plastic. Yeah. But anyway, my battery's dying, folks. I got to get out of here. Yes, that was mine. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Bye. Sarah. Right. No problem. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Be safe. You Be too. safe, everybody. Yep.